Hello, welcome to CN4801. In this session, we'll continue talking about the architectural frameworks and the operating environment. The system of interest usually consists of mission systems and uh, support systems. Each mission system and support system consists of a unique set of integrated system elements that enable the system to accomplish its mission and objectives. And uh, we are going to address some of the different elements that uh, might be included in the uh, system. And this is like a general uh, look at the, uh, uh, the model, the system model, or representation. Uh, it doesn't have to be that all models will will have the same, but those are the common uh, support elements or uh, mission elements that will exist in a system. And those elements are the personal element, the personnel element, the equipment element, the software, the mission resources element, uh, the uh, procedural uh, data element, the system responses element, and the facilities element. The personal element um, or component uh, consists of all human roles required to perform the system mission operations in accordance with safe operating uh, practice and procedures. We have certain procedures that they have to go through and uh, the uh, uh, personnel, uh, all personnel uh, has uh, their role. Uh, the, the system, the whole element has accountability for accomplishing the uh, mission, uh, system mission and objectives and it's been assigned by higher order uh, systems such as the management, the upper management and in the upper management we can actually um, uh, either identify or uh, uh, assign uh, certain uh, uh, hierarchy to uh, send the information or the orders to the personnel. The mission system personnel role include all <coughs> personnel directly required to operate the mission system and uh, accomplish its ob objectives and we call them system operators. The support system personnel role um, is to include personnel who uh, support the mission system through uh, maintenance, uh, supply support, training, publications, security, and other uh, supporting activities. <coughs> the equipment element consists of any physical, uh, multi-level electromechanical optical device that represents an integration of the hardware element and the software element if uh, applicable. The integration of the hardware and software is developed or procured to satisfy system component capability and performance requirements. Uh, either it can be uh, developed within uh, the company in-house or it can be procured or purchased from uh, other uh, resources or vendors. The most important thing when we uh, uh, select or uh, develop the hardware or software that it is capable of accomplishing the mission of the uh, organization or the system. The integration is used to operate and maintain the system and to generate or store energy required by the system. In addition, it can be used to dispose of the system. Actually, the success of the system mission requires that uh, equipment element be operationally available and fully capable of supporting the system missions and the safety of its personnel. To ensure success, engineering um, should be uh, specialized and um, uh, will become a key focus of the equipment element through reliability, availability, maintainability, vulnerability, survivability, safety, human factors, and other uh, uh, different uh, characteristics. Uh, depending on the application, equipment may be fixed, uh, transportable, or mobile. 
the hardware system element could be considered as part of the equipment element uh, and it represents the integrated set of multi-level physical components mechanical electrical electro uh, electronics or optical uh, that is less software uh, configured and its accordance with the system uh, architecture the mission system hardware components are physically integrated to provide the capabilities required to accomplish mission objective the support system hardware components consist of tools required to maintain and support the mission uh, system the software system element uh, consists of all software code uh, source objects uh, and documentation required for installation execution and maintenance of equipment uh, of the equipment elements why do some organizations separate the software element from the equipment element um, we could actually uh, you know uh, uh, put both of them together uh, as one element but it's been separated first because the equipment or the hardware uh, can be uh, uh, either uh, developed or can be purchased separately from a different vendor um, in addition uh, software may be uh, may provide the flexibility to alter system capabilities and performance uh, such as decision making or behavior uh, without having to physically modify, modify the hardware or the equipment um, if you buy uh, a hardware or if you buy um, uh, equipment some sort of equipment and you need to uh, make it do something different or alter the uh, capabilities uh, then you can just install a different software either install a different software or update the current version of the software and you will see that it has different capabilities than before so you don't have to change the whole equipment or the whole hardware to do that just you can uh, do it by upgrading or updating uh, system software and that's why they separated the software from the hardware or the equipment <coughs> the procedural data uh, element consists of all documentation that uh, specifies how to safely operate maintain deploy and store the equipment element in general the procedural data element is based on operating procedures actually we are writing the procedure on how to do it and, uh, step by step and uh, the proper way to do it safe way to do it so uh, basically we are talking about the operating procedures which is uh, uh, documenting the sequence of personal actions required to ensure the proper and safe operation of the system to achieve uh, its intended level of performance under specific operating conditions the uh, procedural data element includes items such as a uh, reference manual uh, the operating guide uh, standard uh, operating uh, practices uh, and procedures uh, checklists um, in addition to other uh, like uh, related procedural uh, data documentation the mission resource or resources system element uh, includes all data consumable and uh, expendable required on board to support the system mission this element consists of data to enable the equipment and the personnel uh, element to successfully plan and conduct the mission based on uh, informed decisions um, it includes or uh, it consists of also consumable um, uh, items such as fuel and water to support the equipment and personnel element during the uh, mission uh, expendable um, um, that means uh, uh, products that ensure the uh, safe and secure uh, mission accomplishment and uh, it should be recorded uh, for post mission performance analysis and assessment in addition it can assist in um, future uh, missions or uh, future uh, development of other uh, systems that uh, will be used by the organization 
the uh, system response element uh, is considered as every natural and human made system uh, that uh, is uh, uh, response or uh, it has a certain mechanism to respond uh, either internally or externally to uh, stimuli in its operating environment. The responses may be explicit, uh, such as reports, communications, uh, altered behavior, or can be implicit, uh, such as mental thoughts, strategies, lessons learned, um, behavioral uh, patterns, and so on. Uh, system responses occur in a variety of forms that we characterize as behavioral patterns, products, services, and byproducts throughout the system's pre-mission, mission, and post-mission phases of operation. So what do we mean by system behavior, products, services, and byproducts? The system behavior consists of system responses based on a plan of action or physical stimuli and uh, audiovisual uh, cues such as uh, threats or opportunities. The stimuli and cues invoke system behavioral patterns or actions that may be categorized as aggressive, uh, being defensive, and uh, uh, everywhere in uh, between uh, those uh, three. The behavioral actions include strategic and tactical uh, tactics and uh, countermeasures uh, that can be produced or that can be developed to uh, address those uh, behaviors. The system products include any type of physical output characteristics or behavioral responses to uh, planned and unplanned events um, and external cues or stimuli. The system byproducts include any type of physical system output or a behavioral that uh, is not deemed to be a system product or a service. The system services any type of physical system behavioral including physical products that assist another entity in the conduct of its mission. The support system elements um, consist of an integrated set of system elements required to support the mission uh, system, the support system and its system elements perform mission system support operations that consist of uh, decision support operations, uh, the system maintenance operations, the manpower and personnel operations, supply support operations, training and uh, training support operations, the technical data operations, the computer resources support operations, the facilities operation, packaging, handling, storage, and transportation uh, operations, and publication support operations. In the following slides, we will address each one of these sub-elements or sub-components in details. For the decision support operations, uh, you can see that mission operations often require critical and timely decisions based on a massive amount of information that exceeds the mental capabilities of the human decision maker. Uh, based on that, you know, I need some kind of a support system that can analyze, that can um, uh, look at the alternatives, evaluate those alternatives, uh, do some assessment or feasibility study, and then uh, recommend the uh, proper or present the proper information for the decision maker where they can take the proper decision. The decision support operations ensure that the decision maker always has the immediate access to the most current uh, processed system mission information to support an informed decision. I'm using this kind of information, I'm using the analysis that I did to provide me with the proper uh, uh, decision, with immediate access to that information, the current information, so I can make the proper decision. So always I have to make sure that the uh, information that's being collected is up to date and it's been analyzed correctly, it's accurate, it's consistent, it's uh, 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 actually uh, uh, available, so I can take the proper decision when needed. The uh, system maintenance operations uh, include system maintenance support concepts and requirements for manpower and personnel, uh, supply support, uh, support and test equipment, uh, technical data training and support and uh, facilities, and of course the uh, uh, 
handling, uh, shipping, and uh, transporting, uh, the packaging, handling, uh, shipping, and transportation. Uh, maintenance support operations establish uh, support for both general system operations and mission specific operations. For example, the software maintenance concept. Um, maintenance personnel normally perform corrective and preventive maintenance on the system. Uh, we usually uh, try to see where uh, the mistakes are and try to maintain the system just to make sure that it's performing the way it should to accomplish the system mission. Maintenance could be on-site. I can send someone to fix the uh, system problem or it can be in a facility where uh, I have a central location that can um, uh, receive all uh, the uh, equipment or software, uh, maintain it and return it back to its place. The manpower and personnel um, operations um, consist of all uh, personnel required to manage, operate and support the system uh, throughout its operational life. Uh, the man uh, power and personnel consideration include in-house versus contractors tasks uh, skills required including skill level and human system uh, interfaces if I don't have the capabilities in-house then I have to outsource it to someone that has the uh, required skills that has the level of skills needed to maintain the system and that's why you know I need to always look at uh, what uh, kind of skills do I have in-house and if I need to uh, either train the employees to uh, acquire the level of skills required for the company or for the system or um, uh, outsource that to a contractor um, to perform the proper task that I need. The supply support operations uh, ensure that all equipment and spare parts required to support the primary system, system support and test equipment are available to support the system pre-mission, mission and post-mission operations. A key supply support objective is to minimize the number of different parts and promote standardization of part selection and usage. Uh, for example, using the same uh, airplane for a fleet, um, instead of you know having many uh, different airplanes, you can minimize the number of uh, parts by using the same uh, airplane and Southwest did that uh, when they used the uh, 737 for their fleet and then uh, purchased most of the parts were related just to that airplane and that will minimize the number of uh, different parts and uh, you can use the parts in more than one airplane. Uh, key issues to be addressed in supply support operations include the communications, uh, inventory management, uh, configuration management, storage, security, and uh, licensing. Uh, you know, of course, if we are talking about, uh, you know, having those parts, uh, standardization, then, um, you know, communication has to be established between the different supplier and companies and uh, other company elements or other system elements just to make sure that uh, we have the proper parts. And then we have to manage the inventory for those parts and configure uh, the way, the procedures, the uh, steps on uh, doing uh, the inventory and maintenance uh, procedure. And then um, the storage, uh, whether on-site or off-site, for uh, the different assemblies or different uh, system elements. Um, how to secure those elements or this information. And the licensing for um, the software, hardware, equipment, the system itself, if needed. The training and training support operations uh, ensure that all personnel uh, required to support the pre-mission mission and post-mission operations are fully trained co to conduct or support system operations and this is what we uh, stated before uh, we said if we need to train the employees to reach to a certain level of uh, skill uh, or skill level or uh, support level then um, I need to do that if not and I don't have the capabilities then 
I will outsource it to a contractor that will have those type of skills and capabilities. The personnel training consists of those activities required to prepare system personnel such as operators, maintenance personnel, and other support personnel. Uh, I will create certain activities, certain uh, training and material to cover uh, that. Uh, the, uh, the personnel must be trained with uh, the appropriate skills uh, to perform their assigned mission objectives and tasks on specific equipment to achieve the required level of performance and uh, expected results for the mission uh, system or for the whole system. The uh, technical data operations um, actually it addresses the pre-mission mission and post-mission operations that's required to accurate to uh, to be accurate uh, precise and timely uh, in their data uh, and data points the technical data operations support personnel and computer equipment decision making um, uh, that uh, is uh, acquired to ensure that all decisions are made when scheduled or as appropriate to achieve the mission objectives uh, and to have the same level of performance as uh, expected and with the expected uh, results. The computer resource support operation um, it's uh, highly dependent on technology such as computer resources to provide information and processing of data support pre-mission mission and post-mission uh, operations uh, so uh, we need to actually plan for the type of technology that we are looking for for the type of computers or computer resources that's that's needed uh, procure those items uh, upgrade as needed and uh, maintain them frequently the computer support operations ensure that system reliability, availability, and maintainability, which is uh, something that we call RAM, the uh, reliability, availability, and maintainability uh, requirements will uh, be achieved and with uh, a cost-effective uh, uh, approach. The packaging, handling, storage, and transportation operations um, it happens during system deployment, uh, redeployment, and uh, storage. Uh, system support activities uh, must actually provide the capability to safely and securely transport and store the system and its components. Uh, shipment and storage must be accomplished um, to avoid uh, damage or uh, decomposition the packaging handling storage and transportation activities must have a clear understanding of the environmental conditions and characteristics that pose risk to system uh, while in transit as well as long-term shelf life effects on uh, material and again you know we are talking about either um, uh, hardware equipment or we are talking about um, software equ equipment uh, products or services that applies for any kind of system uh, that we are dealing with uh, we will have a problem with uh, or a risk uh, in the system while in transit transit or uh, the type of material that's been used in the system Publication support operations, um, it includes the, uh, the uh, information uh, regarding the system and system support equipment and um, the uh, maintenance and usage uh, for that system. Uh, so we need some kind of uh, documents or publication that should be uh, publicized and distributed to uh, all personnel such as the technical manuals the reference uh, guides and the training uh, material and uh, we consider that as publication support uh, operations uh, going back to the elements and talking about the uh, last element which is the facility uh, or facilities system element we can say that this one includes all the system entities uh, required to support uh, and sustain the mission system elements 
and the support system elements system support for uh, it's a, it's considered as a system support for pre-mission mission and post-mission operations required uh, to enable operator and uh, support the personnel to accomplish their assigned mission tasks and objective in a reasonable work environment depending on the type of the system the facilities support uh, the different tasks uh, based on um, the task itself or the type of task uh, for example we have facilities for planning and uh, control mission we have facilities uh, to provide decision support uh, we have facilities to uh, provide brief and debrief uh, store uh, storage uh, like physical system or product uh, between missions uh, system storage um, also uh, we uh, we have uh, facilities that support uh, configuration repair maintenance refurbish and uh, replenish system capabilities and resources um, also uh, we can uh, assign a facility for analyzing the post mission data and documenting uh, lessons learned this is an example of uh, an architecture and this is architecture for a house uh, which can be considered as uh, you know a simple blueprint it's a conceptual representation it's looking at the house the components of the house and how they interact with each other um, this is a basic one uh, again you know depends on the system and the complexity of the system uh, we will have a, a more complex architecture that will uh, uh, have more details and more interactions between the different components uh, Another example is uh, informational uh, architecture such as the emergency instruction card uh, that exists in an airplane and you can see that it has drawings that will represent the different steps or different uh, procedures that should be used in case of an emergency. Uh, also again you know uh, with uh, the different airplanes it might differ it might be more complicated it you might have more procedures uh, it depends on the type of uh, system that you are dealing with we can do that with other systems as needed uh, so uh, that's another example of a simple architecture that can be used in a system um, in general any system we can um, uh, decompose that into uh, different elements um, and if we have more of sub elements and uh, sub sub elements then we can uh, uh, decompose it into multi levels and show the different levels within that system so we'll have system 0 and then we have element 1 uh, 1 1 2 and then we have a sub element which is 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2 and 2.4, and so on. So we can uh, divide and um, identify the different elements, sub-elements, and sub-sub-elements in the system uh, that, with the level of details that's needed as needed for uh, understanding the uh, system, uh, the components of the system, and the interaction between these components. That will be all for this session. For the next session, we, go, we are going to address uh, the um, other uh, uh, interactions or how the interactions happen and the uh, operating uh, environment. Thank you and have a great day.